What's up guys, JS2 Sense here. I'm gonna bring you kind of a quick, fun, informational video. One that uh, Nick actually suggested that we do, but I've seen suggestions online asking for this as well. And that basically being in a time right now when you can't buy a new graphics card, what are the best ways to speed up your system without, uh, you know, having to buy a graphics card? What are the other things you can upgrade that can actually improve your experience on your computer while you're waiting for things to become available? So today we'll talk about some of that. Today's video is sponsored by DataCamp, the online platform making it easy to build data skills. Acquire skills faster with over 350 courses and interactive learning experiences. Curated courses include many popular sciences like SQL, Python, and machine learning, and provide easy to follow tracks so you can learn at your own pace. Combine video classes with practical exercises and skills assessments. Take a free assessment and receive personalized learning recommendations to get you started on your learning adventure. So start investing in yourself by using my link in the description below and check out the first chapter of any course for free. My first recommendation for speeding up a computer has always been the same, and that is adding SSDs. If you're still running on a spinning media or you're still running on a, on a, on a hard disk, I know I, I've seen I've heard, I've experienced this myself where I'm just like, you know what, my computer's fast enough, the loading times are okay, I don't need an SSD. Then you experience an SSD, even a SATA drive, and you then immediately realize what a stubborn, arrogant person you were being for thinking you didn't need it to begin with. But one of the things I'm gonna suggest if you already have an SSD is get a second one. Now, a lot of people will get a large SSD, whether it be an NVMe or a two and a half inch drive, and they'll put everything on one drive, but, when you can simultaneously access data by having games on one drive and programs on another drive and your OS on a separate drive, you'd be surprised how even on an SSD, how much faster that can make your system in terms of responsiveness. Boot times are faster. Loading times of your games are significantly faster if they're on a separate drive than your operating system. Even if they're on a separate drive than say Steam is or, or, or Origin or Epic or any of that sort of stuff. If they're on a separate drive, they're accessed independently from having to wait for any of the OS stuff to be handled prior to be able to access any sort of third-party data. Even if you have an NVMe SSD, you can still add a two and a half inch drive, which are extremely cheap these days, and put all your games and your secondary programs and stuff on there to keep your OS drive uncluttered and running quick. So I know that seems like an extremely basic idea, but you'd be surprised how many people push back because they've never experienced how much of a change it actually makes for your system to get things separated from the OS and the SSD. Even if you're running a hard disk, you'd be surprised how much faster your system is if your games are on a separate hard disk than your, your OS. So if you're gonna be stubborn and still don't wanna buy an SSD in 2021, almost 22, for whatever reason, then fine. As long as you get your, your programs and your games and such, separate from your operating system drive, that single-handedly will speed up your system. Now, speeding up your system can also mean making your CPU run faster. Without necessarily having to overclock anything, cooling your CPU is the best way to make your CPU faster. If you're running a stock out-of-the-box cooler, whether it be an AMD Wraith cooler or whatever, all modern CPUs over the last few generations have built-in turbo clock algorithms, where basically the cooler it is, the higher it will go on the boost clocks up to the table maximum, which is where it's pre-programmed to say you can go up to this speed, but the longer it will stay at that speed. We sort of demonstrated uh, when we did our video on how to test your system for thermal throttling, any sort of errors or um, critical stops or crashes. I showed you how just turning on one switch with Ryzen and turning on precision boost overdrive increases the power available to the CPU and increases the clock available to the CPU, which gives you extremely tangible differences in performance versus stock and overclocked. But you obviously can't overclock your CPU if you don't have proper cooling. And if you're stuck on stock cooling, you're very limited as to how far you can go. So AIOs are obviously a quick and easy way to do that. The thermal capacity of water is much greater than that of air. Um, but a lot of people are not comfortable with water in their system because, you know, they are not foolproof. They can and have leaked. And so people get really turned off by this. But air coolers these days with the vapor chamber technologies and the dual towers or even the single tower versions of the Be Quiet coolers, Noctua's um, Cooler Master tower, cooling towers, all of these are leagues beyond the capability of stock cooling for your CPUs. So getting any sort of better cooling in for your CPU will allow you to 
increase the performance of your system. That may not necessarily affect FPS in your games, obviously, because your games are still highly dependent on your graphics card, unless you're playing a very CPU dependent game, something like Rust or Minecraft or any sort of uh, a game that has a large world that has to be loaded and all that handles is handled on the world thread, which is specifically the CPU. Speeding up your CPU by keeping it cooler and maybe turning the dial a little bit, turning on like Precision Boost Overdrive or XMP on Intel or something like that will allow you to keep those clocks higher, which will give you better FPS uh, overall. The other thing is these coolers don't do a very good job if the case cooling itself is no good. So if you haven't maxed out the fan capacity inside your case, consider adding more fans. If your case is extremely limited, like if you're running something like an H510 Elite from NZXT or an old H H500 or any of the non-mesh panel, uh, what was that Cooler Master C500 uh, I think it was that had the plexiglass front and two giant 200 millimeter fans, but it was awful because the air couldn't get in there. So they came up with a mesh front. If you're running cases like that, you'd be surprised if you actually took a temperature monitor over time and put your system under load and watched your clock speeds in a case like that that's extremely choked off, you'll find that it starts quick. And over time, the curve is gonna trend downward in terms of your clock speeds because the temperature is trending upward. So you need to get better cooling in your system. The other thing too is if you fall in that category and your CPU is already being choked off slightly because of the poor airflow in your case, Adding a bigger, badder, faster graphics card is going to suffer the same fate. And it's actually going to increase the temperatures in your case even more by adding a more powerful graphics card because more powerful graphics cards also equal more heat. <clears throat> You're gonna slow everything down. Your SSDs, which are, which are temperature sensitive, your CPU obviously, and your GPU is not gonna run to its full potential if your case is not prepared and ready to handle the extra heat it needs to exchange. So sometimes buying an entirely new case is what it takes to get your system up and running. I've seen people send me um, their build lists and, their, and photos of their system, and they're like, I don't understand. My graphics card hits 86C and it starts to throttle and my CPU continues to slow down. What is happening here? And I'll look and they have high-end CPU, high-end GPU, and they're running a basic case, like a $49 case with very little airflow, which is causing all of their high-end components to throttle and actually give them the performance of lower end parts because it cannot handle the amount of heat that those parts are generating. Therefore, by scrimping out on a case going, eh, it's just a box to put my stuff in, not realizing that box controls everything when it comes to the airflow that your parts need to perform their best. Now, if, you, if you're going, Jay, I've already got a decent flowing case. I've already got SSDs. I've already got a water cooler or a nice air cooler. Um, my temps are still acting kind of weird and my system's slowing down, what should I do? Um, a repaste is something I would highly recommend. You'd be, if the paste somehow dried out or cracked um, or got jostled and bumped and that, that, that bond got broken because it does turn into kind of like a, a paste, then it starts to look like a, a dry lake bed and you move that and you crack it, then you're no longer getting good thermal transfer and that could be causing you some problems. But all these suggestions that I just gave you might sound like super common sense, and they are, but that's only common sense to people that have experienced this and know exactly what they're doing. And a lot of my audience are very new to this and they're still preparing their very first builds or they've got their very first build that maybe isn't optimized like they would like and they're looking at ways to improve it while also looking for graphics cards and such. So these are my best recommendations to not only get an existing computer running top notch, but also to prepare your system and some food for thought, the things to think about before you build it to make sure you don't make any of these mistakes, you know, prior to building your system. So if you if you if you got now got a pile of parts that you haven't built yet because you're still waiting on your GPU and you've got your 5900X and you got your you know your X570 motherboard and you've got 32 gigs of RAM and you've got your big cooling tower and you're you're still waiting on your hypothetical 6800 XT or 3080 or whatever and you went, ah, you know what? I don't really look at my case too much. I don't care about that. I'm gonna save some money there. And you suddenly realize maybe the airflow isn't good enough. It's better to find that out now than to build it all and have to unbuild it and put it in a different case. Now, one other thing that you can do, which seems super simple, and maybe we'll do a video separately about this, removing the amount of bloatware and unnecessary programs running in the background. Remember, every pro if you click that little task manager down the bottom and it opens up to like a, a sea of icons, 
every single one of those programs that are currently running are being accessed by the CPU and the memory, and every single one of those are chipping away at the performance of your system. You do not need things running constantly in the background. I mean, some RGB software, I guess you would have to leave running, otherwise it just reverts to rainbow puke if it doesn't have a hardware mode. But every single one of those are causing your system to have to deal with those processes that are gonna affect your FPS, and they're gonna affect the performance of your system. I'm one of those people that have nothing running in the background that doesn't need to. I also have worked on computers in the past where they've got every program they have ever installed auto starting when Windows starts. That leads to increased boot times, increased shutdown times, increased uh, effect on your FPS because if those pro programs are priority accessing to the, the CPU, the CPU is gonna put your FPS and your game in a background process while it's handling that, which is gonna give you dips and spikes and stutters and all sorts of stuff that could be affecting your gaming performance, which you might think it's happening because your GPU sucks when all along, it's just the optimization of your system sucks. So if you want us to do a video about that and optimizing the software on your system so that you're not dealing with any of those sorts of slowdowns, comment down below, Jay, please make that software video and I'd be glad to do that. This is where you guys also put down in the comments below what your favorite uh, tips and tricks are to get the most out of your system while you're waiting for the GPU shortages to improve and you can get uh, your system running as fast as you want it. In the meantime, there are things that you can do. There are things you can do with your system that can optimize it and make it better while you're waiting for you know, hardware to improve. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. And probably my best tip to make your, your program or your system run better is to get a Jay's Two Cents Gaming Mat, which is still available and the link is down in the description below. See you tomorrow.